recording. Okay, good. Uh, welcome everyone to Connect and Create. I'm Karina Sephora. Um, and uh, we have a wonderful guest here with us today. And uh, we have some returning people in our audience and we have everyone on Facebook that's having an opportunity to be a part of this conversation today. So thank you all for being here. And um, as we get started, I wanted to just share with you a little bit about how Connect and Create began. And, um, and, um, and then we'll introduce Kathy and then away we'll go. So uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, I found myself really with this sort of missing of getting out and being able to meet other artists and go to artist talks. And um, you know that part of my life was just not happening as many of us. And so I looked to see what I could create and I came up with this idea because I'd been interviewed on someone else's um, Zoom conversation uh, that it might be a nice place to um, connect with people. And so this uh, show has been going for a year and we are, what episode are we at? We are at episode- um, 51, wasn't it? 51, 52? 52, yes, episode 52. So uh, this has been happening for almost exactly a year and I'm, I'm looking to determine how much longer I'll continue with Connect and Create. So, um, and here we are at episode 52. So. Um, I'd like to also give a, a big uh, shout out to um, Fulton County Council for the Arts for the generous grant that I've received who um, run this show. Um, and so thank you very much. And without further ado, I will um, introduce you to Kathy. Kathy, anything you'd like to say uh, before I give your formal introduction? No, no, I'm good, I'm good. Hello everybody, thank you for coming. <laughs> awesome, wonderful. So um, let's see. Kathy is a, a contemporary artist and creates urban landscape paintings that reflect city life in all its glory. As an occupational therapist, uh, Kathy used to help develop fine motor skills in children. And during a career break, she realized that the artist's dream remained and it was now or never. She would, uh, she would regret it if she did not at least try. And that was in 2008. And since then, Kathy has tenaciously built her career and says that she has been learning on the job ever since. Her style has developed from an early predominantly close uh, uh, circle-based abstracts into urban landscapes, fueled by a lifelong interest in buildings and rooted in a childhood dominated by the giant decaying cotton mills in the North of England. Kathy now exhibits around the UK, um, Europe, and is in collections as far afield as Canada, Africa, and New Zealand. Congratulations. And she lives in a chapel near Buckingham mm -hmm. in the UK, right. which she converted with her husband. And it is a cl it's close enough to London to get an urban architecture fix when needed. And when Kathy's not steering 60 foot of steel canal boat along waterways and wielding a windless a windlass windlass she, that's right all right she can <laughs> she can be found splattering paint and singing loudly in her buckingham studio wonderful i love all of those things i'd love to see Thank pictures you. of you, Do you are you going to show us pictures of your studio um i might i might turn the, the camera around i think i've got a few of me in progress and uh, in progress shots so you'll see a little bit of the studio but okay that's great really, more of england and the boat too i'm excited about this boat <laughs> all right another well, time perhaps <laughs> without further ado kathy please uh i'd love to hear from you and please share with our audience right hello thank you uh, karina and uh Welcome everybody and I'm going to talk about my 4950 paintings challenge which I did in 2018 and you can see some of them behind me here but I'll go in more detail once I start um, sharing so I'm going to I've got a few slides to go through so let me start the screen sharing let's hope this will work so that's what I want to share and there we go so the 4950 paintings challenge it's a bit of a mouthful I tended to just call it the 4950 challenge or 4950 paintings. So what was it? Let me just go, uh, sorry, my slide's not changing. Okay. 
Sorry, I, I am not. Ah, that's changing too slowly. Bear with me. There we go. Let's start again. Right. So what is it? Um, well, it started off when a friend of mine in 2017 did a 50 prints challenge. And it sounded like a really good idea. And I was mulling around with an idea of how I could convert that. But I had a few problems because um, normally the paintings I do are quite large, this type of thing. And they're quite intricate, quite detailed. So I wondered how I would do that. So I had several things I needed to think of. First of all, I knew I couldn't create something like that in the time I had, certainly not once a week, as well as doing the other paintings that I wanted to do. I then had the other issue with the detail is that when my work goes small, because I, the technique I use, I use masking fluid and I paint it on. If I have too much detail, I have nowhere left for the paint to actually stick to. So doing a full building, complicated buildings were out. So I came up with the idea then of doing the architectural details. Why 49.50? Well, I was playing around with ideas for size and I was sort of thinking how I could make it a nice catchy little phrase. And I suddenly thought, well, seven by seven is 49 if you work in inches, inches. And that's a nice small size that you can actually work on and do something with without being too tiny that you just sort of need a microscope to look at it. So I, um, I came up with this idea. I, um, what else I, I wanted them to be local because I kept having people asking me. I tended to do London and Manchester. I'm originally from Manchester in the UK and London's quite a popular venue. So I thought, well, I'll um, do something local and doing them small again makes them easier for people to, to, to buy because it made them cheaper and it, it just gave me a different range. So there were lots of reasons for doing the small ones. Plus I wanted the challenge of actually doing a whole body of work and 50 seems like a lot of paintings to do, quite a challenge and I knew it would be a hard thing to take on and it would I would certainly grow from doing it. So those are the reasons behind it and um, I'll go on. So my I ended up with a list now, I, that was the first thing I did was figure out what I was going to paint. You, you won't be able to read this very well, but I basically listed all the architectural details I could think of. I did do a Google search to try and find more. Now, as I went through, I had some, I needed to jumble them up because I didn't want to do like three weeks of, of just doing windows. I wanted to, to, to mix them up so there's more interest to them. And also I wanted to be sure that um, I could get some interest in things. So I didn't want to use the same building more than once. I've found from previous challenges, if you do an area without any plan beforehand, you end up with doing the same building five times and then you suddenly realize you've run out of, of, of paintings to do in your series. So that, that seemed to make sense. So I need to each building once. Some details I did use twice, but I tried to make sure there were different things. So these two are both walls, but one's a stone wall and one's a brick wall. Uh, and again, with win windows, we used a few times. So I had an arch window that was a stone window, and this one was made, made of metal. So the, the, um, these are the archy bits here are actually um, wood on, in, inside a, a stone frame. So it was just trying to mix things up to make it as, as interesting interesting and varied as possible. So those are my rules. I have a seven by seven or 49 square inches, hence the 4950 paintings challenge title. Architectural details, Buckingham and local area. I felt I wanted to expand it a little bit because there are, Buckingham's quite a small town. So I thought I might have trouble finding too many. Buildings only used once and details according to my list. And then I told everybody I was doing it to make sure I actually got around to doing it, because that's the other thing. If you don't announce your intention, sometimes you forget about it and it doesn't get done. So that's where I was. And then I started. First thing I did was go out and take photographs. And the first day I chose was really grey and miserable. And to begin with, what I was doing was snapping everything. I had a vague idea of the list, 50 items, keeping that in your head isn't so easy so I tended to initially I was going around and just thinking right well I knew I needed a clock I knew I needed several windows so I was taking lots of photographs 
And uh, these, this is the type of thing. This is the first one, which is called Marking Time. So that was my reference image and it's um, quite gray because it was such a poor day. Plus that clock, I didn't have a zoom lens. That was when I realized I needed a zoom lens on my camera to actually get in closer. Uh, so this is a resulting painting, which is the first one, which is what I started using for the advertising. The other thing I was doing the whole time with this was that I was blogging about it. So I was sharing the painting in, you know, this is the painting I'm going to do, and this is the painting in progress and talking about it on my website. So people would hopefully to generate interest in, in the, in the, the um, challenge. Is another one, an early one, and sometimes the the uh, I did find the yeah, paintings were much nicer than the original subject. But I needed to do a drain, and I managed to find this one that was on a on a slightly off angle, which I made it a, li a little bit more interesting. I'm going to slow down because I'm talking too fast. So uh, that's another one. Sometimes I had too much choice. So this this um, is the drain pipe one. And there are lots of drain pipes everywhere. So uh, I, that was another one I had. There were several others, but I, it got to the point where I thought I can't take all the photographs because I don't you know. Fifty sounds a lot, but once you actually start looking into it, there's there's a lot you can't do. And sometimes some of the decisions were really hard because I'd find four or five that were really lovely, and I wanted to do all of them, but then I wouldn't be working within the guidelines of the challenge of doing the, the 50 different ones so uh, and I'll just show you these are some of my rejects so you can see I had quite a lot of interesting stuff there that I could have worked with but the the um, crenellations on, on on the old jail here was because I needed that and I'll come, come to to why I, I didn't use the jail earlier but I just found all these fabulous things and it's it was really nice to go out with the camera and look because you actually start seeing the details in an area that you live in that you maybe wouldn't notice the rest of the time. So these two, some details were hard to find. This one, I had a stained glass window as one of my options, but I found that the stained glass windows are not that impressive to see when you're photographing them from outside looking in. And one of the things I was quite keen on doing was an unwritten rule was that I wanted people to be able to find these easily. So as much as possible, I wanted everything to be outside. Now I say as much as possible because the next one, the bolt here, I had trouble with that one because most bolts on buildings are on the inside. So trying to find a bolt on a building that was outside around Bucking was proving quite difficult. And I found this one is in the old jail. So I knew people could at least then go in and have a look at it, which is behind the main door. So, uh, so that's that one. Right, let's go to the next one. I seem to have all these things at the bottom I would like to get rid of. You can't see all the slides. Okay. So the next thing is I kept the time quite well to begin with, but as the year goes on and exhibitions cropped up and this, that and the other, I was finding I was getting behind. So I got to the point where I actually, I was far behind. And so I then started working far more in batches. So this is what towards the end when I found that actually I didn't have enough time to do everything. So these were, I had about 20 left to do by the end of November, which was an awful lot. So lots of these got done in December, hence the um, Christmas lights and everything else. So where are we? Where? Now, part of this process in 2018, I started doing meditations on my paintings. And I thought when I was thinking of how to do the, ex the exhibition at the end, that actually it would be quite nice to have the meditations with them because it was a way of connecting with people, uh, connecting people with the art and talking about what thought processes went through my mind, why I chose certain things over others. And so I started doing that. And some of them would be a pure descriptive. So this one on um, Juliet Balcony here is, is very much a, a thought process. Whereas Cottage Latch, I started thinking about what would be behind that door? What, what would, if you open that door and went into that building, what would you find? And so I went on a whole trail around possible scenarios that might be behind that door. Okay, so where are we going? 
So I managed to get it done. And this painting here is, I did it, it was literally to the wire. 31st of December, this painting was taken when I'd finished the, the 50th painting and I lined them all up like that and stood on my stairs and looked down and took a photograph. So that's the photograph of the finished painting. And there was always a plan with the 4950 challenge was to um, do an exhibition afterwards. So uh, I booked place called the Chantry Chapel. Now, the reason I use the Chantry Chapel, which is a, um, a bit of a mouthful to say when you're trying to say it like this, is it's the oldest building in Buckingham and it's quite small, which fitted with the sort of, the, these paintings are quite small. And you can see they don't take up all that much room, all those 50 paintings, that's, um, there's 13 boards there. So you can get the ideas. I, I, I need to figure out what that is in, in meters. So that's what probably about four meters that way. So not a lot of space to actually have them on display. This is the chapel itself, because I thought you might like to see that. I just love the old details. Next thing I discovered with um, framing 50 paintings is you need a production line and you end up, I ended up bulk buying because 50 frames, 50 mounts. And so this is this is the production line in, in pro progress. That's my boxes of, paint, of paintings. And while I was um, framing them, I was wrapping them up ready to go to the exhibition because the exhibition I needed to be ready. I had a short time frame. I had to be in there at nine o'clock and the first visitors were expected at 11. So there wasn't a lot of time to actually set everything up. The easy thing was, was that everything was going to be in order. So I didn't have to worry which painting was going to go where. It was a case of making sure they're in all order and just putting them up. Um, whereas another exhibition, I might be moving paintings around, just trying to decide how it would look, but that wasn't an issue in this case. Um, I did those, the, I needed to get boards because it was an old, with it being um, a historic building, I wasn't allowed to put anything in the walls. It all had to be freestanding. Uh, this is my packed up paintings here. And I, just, I discovered that um, a quarter of the paintings fit very nicely in an Ikea bag. So I had four of those, which meant it much easier than carting boxes of paintings. And um, I managed to get some advertising uh, a feature in the local, one of the local magazines. This is Buckinghamshire Life magazine, which is a, a local magazine. Uh, and I've put some notes there is that the things I really found is that because of, of the time constraint, I needed, I needed to be as prepared as possible beforehand. I had the installation planned and I made sure everything was I could carry because I knew I'd have to carry it from where I could park the car to where I could actually set it up. And this is the installation day. There's me putting everything up and my banner outside. And just more about the actual exhibition. And I, I got lots of help setting up and I was prepared beforehand and it was only a weekend. So I set up on the Friday and it finished on the Sunday and it was very well received. I've sold about a quarter of them now. So no, a third of them now. So um, sales are going quite nicely with those. And the, the next few slides are just looking at the, the painting. So I'm quite happy to answer people's questions now because there isn't, um, a lot else I can say about the um, exhibition. I've got a few pointers at the end, but we can finish through those. So I'll just sc scroll through these. So if anybody wants to ask anything about any of them, I thought you'd like to see them all. Um, what's, your, what's your medium? I use watercolor and acrylic ink, and then I use a masking technique, which is how I get the white lines, which is what I was saying about, I couldn't go into too much detail without losing some of the, um, movement of the paint which is half the character of watercolor really the uh, masking technique that you mentioned really brings out uh like an emphasis you know and kind of brings it into another realm aside from you know oh okay we've seen this watercolor painting of a you know location before to something very much more kind of graphic and i'd say it has a little bit more of a contemporary flair to it 
I think so. And I, I, I like the fact that because I've got that structure before I start, it gives me the freedom to really explore the watercolour and the acrylic ink as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So I know that I'm going to have a structure there, however wild I go around it, which I think brings the two balance themselves out. I started thinking when I first started doing it, so like order and chaos. So you've got your order of your masking fluid and your chaos of your paint, and it seems to work quite nicely together. Do you mind sharing what you use for your masking fluid? I use Winsor & Newton's. I've tried various other ones, but I honestly find that is the best one for me. And I use something called a ruling pen, which I have got somewhere here, which I can look and find in a minute. But um, I don't really want to go wandering off. Otherwise, we'll be looking at blank screen. <laughs> but uh, I, do you know what a ruling pen is? It's basically two bits of metal that go together and then fit two ticks. I love your your subjects. <laughs> uh, I, I'm an urban planner and I, I look at this stuff all the time. And I think, yeah. does anyone else, you know, love this stuff as much as I do? And now I know. Hey, they do, they do. So that, if, if I can get that to the, can you see that? So that's a ruling pen. And I use it like a dip pen. So I just dip it in and, and draw with it. Great. And I, I don't use anything else. Um, I don't need anything else because if you want to do a large area you just use it sideways on and it, it works and I don't have ruined brushes at the end of it which I know a lot of artists find problem with using masking fluid great uh, so few, you, you you shared a little bit about your working really large in the very beginning and then yes. chose to do this project um where you made say again the quantity of it was 50 50 yes what great great and so how do you feel about creating the pieces that are the smaller in this you know series or what did you get out of this process of making all of these you know they're far beyond sketches they're they're paintings but on this kind of smaller format what's the process like for you or the experience of creating the smaller pieces versus the much more large intricate pieces a lot of them tended to be more com compact in terms of creating them so um, when i'm working on the bigger ones it takes me days to actually get to a point where I'm, I'm i'm at the painting whereas the preparation for some of these i could do within a couple of hours and then be on to the painting quite quickly mm -hmm. just because they were so much smaller mm -hmm. and it forced me to think because they were all square there were some things like there's a steeple there you can see the steeple there and that is how do you put something that's long and thin in a square space? So yeah. it really challenged me in terms of composition, figuring out how to fit them in, how to, you know, how to find interest in something, particularly with some of them being very mundane, like the drain, the um, drain pipes, how to make the drain pipe look exciting and pipe work. I thought I want, there's loads of pipe work in the building, so we need to put that in. Uh, so that's this one here. I don't even see my curse the top uh, right so I, I found that at the back of, of, of in, in an alleyway at the back and there was all these they've added these are all uh, most of Buckingham's like Georgian era so it's sort of like 1800s and they put bits in and um, they just oh I need to put a pipe in there and I need to fit it into this other pipe so it, it really is very what we call Heath Robinson I think you call it Rube Goldberg isn't it where you, you, you're putting things together in such a yeah. bizarre way because that's the only thing where you can fit them together so I, I quite like these quirky things that you find with buildings and it gave me a chance to really look at those whereas if you're looking at a grand impressive building you're looking at scale, the impression it's giving, whereas some of these things are really quite intimate. I mean, taps, they, they, they tap. If I go back, I've got to think about the tap there somewhere. So the tap, uh, I, I found that is a cheap, scrappy brass tap that is in the corner of the most beautiful courtyard you can imagine at a stately home in Buckinghamshire. And it just, it, it like that it fits there but if you look at it it's nothing special to look at and mm. um, i haven't i have got the. i don't think i have got the original photograph here and you'll see how tatty it is but i'm not again whether that will show very well unfortunately i, I should uh, a bit of a glare 
it's a bit of a glare, yes, unfortunately. But if you if you can imagine that that's, um, I mean, you can look it up on my website, or I can try and find it in a minute. But uh, it, it was just that contrast between this splendid environment and this functional little bit of normality, which I, I, I really appealed to me about that tap. Mm. I quite like the sky in this um, one with the, it looks like a lamp coming out. Yeah, this side is, of the yeah. Now, is that some kind of just experimental, like wet paper with dropping ink into it or how are you getting- it's, it's wet on wet and I use a lot of salt in my process. Oh, so great. that's why I like to have space because if, if you try and do something that's very heavily masked, what you find is the, the salt doesn't do any work because the, the masking in, interferes or you lose it when you pull the, mask, the masking off. So that, because it was a nice open area with no masking in, the salt was able to do some work. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, I love your sort of like aspects of precision and creating, you know, what you see through the lens of the camera, but bringing your own style to it. This is very, mm. very unique. But I would like to go back to one thing also, which is how you choose the angles, you know, and the details as your subject matter um, in the photography. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, it's it really varies because I've always liked to I can remember when uh, when I had children, somebody said to me, if you want to decorate a child's room, you need to get down to a child's level. Mm. And it's something that's always struck me. And looking at photography, they often, you often see these photographs where people are looking up. So angle is very important to me. And I like to try and get some depth in. It was a lot more difficult with these because they were such small subject matters. And I was off often focused on like one one detail because that was the whole theory behind it so whereas normally I do a large picture and I'd have I'd have railings in the foreground and a big building in the background say or something like that here I didn't have necessarily that scope to do it depending on what the um, architectural detail was so some architectural details it was really easy uh, but others it, that there wasn't that scope so it was really a challenge in terms of how how I actually then do do take the photograph and and so sometimes I went back because I wasn't happy I did one of a light light and the trees were behind it but I liked the way because it was in in January so there were no leaves on the trees mm -hmm. so the tree behind was all you could see all the twisting branches and and that I like the contrast between the, the curved twisting branches and this very linear street light, which you have seen. Let me go back to so find it. I've got it in here somewhere. There it is. So you see, you, you can just about see, unfortunately. Let me let me just move that up a bit and then, then you can actually see it. So yeah, that's probably really what, what went behind me, me choosing that. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Well, uh, let's question anything that you'd like to. to... Yeah, I, I'll just let me let me finish off with with some takeaways, and then if you've got any more questions, oh, yeah. I've, I've, oh. I've, I've got a walk through video, but I don't know that we've got enough time to watch that. Oh, oh, okay, good enough. Sorry, I thought you were wrapping up. No worries. No, no, I've got to walk through video. Actually, I could do. It's got no sound to it, and it's a bit. Um, my my video techniques improved, but let me go through the video, see if it will play, and then I Perfect. can hopefully talk through, so you get the idea of, of of the actual exhibition and how it was. Now, click that once. Do I have to click it again? Oh, it's thinking. There you go, and you got the sound connected. Good, good. <laughs> Well, there's no sound on the video. It's just oh, a quiet okay. walk. Uh, then we go, we, we're going to um, YouTube. YouTube, I think. Where are you, video? Oh, there we go. Perfect. Oh, I have got to speak. Kathy, could you share with us uh, how you price your pieces? 
Um, at the moment, it's worked on how long I reckon they're going to take, and then I um, I work by square inches. So I've got a I've worked out a price per square inch, and that's how I work it at the moment. And then I allow extra for framing. Okay, thank you. So there is there is some sound on here, and it's distracting a little bit. <laughs> So I don't know if you want to carry on with that. You want me to stop that and go back to my, um, what we're doing for time. Don't worry, okay at the moment. We're doing great. We have 15 minutes. Okay, that's fine. I can mute that actually. It might, you might be useful because I don't really think I really want that sound. I'd rather people just had a look. So let me just mute the sound there. because I'm, I'm very conscious that I've, I've done a lot more videos since then and, and um, I think I'm a lot calmer about talking about things so we, we, we couldn't hear there. any we couldn't hear anything Kathy oh there was sound but it was really quiet and, oh and right so that's anything. that's why I thought I'm, I, I, it was distracting me I'm sorry about that okay that's all right so this this is going around so you, you'll see some of these pictures I've shown you them as, as stills and I mixed it in with some stills because I just thought it would make it so you can see the building there and, and how we're just coming around the end and it was a beautiful space to work in I think you did it didn't you do a town trail with your pictures Kathy I did afterwards yes yeah. I um, I did because lots of people are asking me where they were and I started sharing them. There's a local Facebook group. And I started sharing them with Facebook group with without telling people where they were and then letting people guess. And then I'd let them know the next day or something like that. And that um, I have found that's been the, the best thing about this. The these paintings now I've done them is that people really engage with them because they're small and they like the fact they can look for these details and they know they're somewhere in Buckingham or some of them are outside in some of the villages, but uh, I, I, I did a trail with the ones that I knew were in Buckingham so that people would be able to find them on foot. And uh, that was that was quite popular. It, um, and I've had a lot of good feedback from that one. I think you should launch that again while we're still partially <laughs> locked down, you know, because that was really good. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank yeah. you. I think at some point uh, the idea is to put a book together and then people can use the booklet. So uh, I was just sorting out because that's the thing you need. You need pictures with you to really find them. And then yeah. you see the building a bit more. And then they can be in the jail and in the town. Yes, jail, yes. They? Yeah. If, yeah, the Americans might wonder what we're talking about when we say <laughs> in the jail. <laughs> True. <laughs> it's a look. You saw a picture. There was a picture of it earlier on the old jail in Buckingham. It's um, it's a, a landmark. It's probably the the image. The Chantry Chapel is is tucked away in a corner. It's a little gem that's tucked away in a corner. But um, the jail's probably the if if people. It's like if you think of London, you think of Big Ben. Buckingham is the jail. So that's the video. And then if I if I go, oh now I'm on YouTube. Let me just figure out how to get out of YouTube. Uh bear with me a second. I need oh, there we go. That's my next slide. So the takeaways I I I'd have say from, from doing this was if you want to do a challenge like this, is have a plan first. Think about what you want to do. But having said that, don't be afraid to be flexible because there were some like I did them in the wrong order and then I suddenly realized I couldn't find my stained glass window so it ended up being a stained glass sky however frustrated you get keep going don't be afraid to burn the candle at both ends to get the job finished because if you've given yourself a deadline it's it really feels good to get it finished on time even if it is all last minute and do share what you're doing. People were fascinated by the project, the process. Every time I saw people, I did various demonstrations out, out and about, and I found people were saying, oh, I've heard you talk about this. What's, how's it going? And um, what building are you doing next? And we decided what you're gonna do for this one. Because I posted a list, that um, list you saw at the beginning, I posted mm -hmm. that on my website so people could see. And at one point I was asking for suggestions so there were lots of um, spin-offs from it that were really quite positive in terms of just 
engaging with people and interacting with people. Wonderful. So that's more or less it for my talk. So um, I'm, thank you for being here. There's a link there if you want to see all the paintings in one place on my website, or if you just go to kathyreadart.com and you look in the paintings, there is a link to the 4950 paintings there if you want to see them all. <clears throat> so any more questions? And does it say on the website which ones are still for sale? Uh, in the shop, the ones that are available, yeah, are, yeah are still there. Yeah. Excuse me, I'm going to cough. <clears throat> Wonderful. Um, I put the link. It's did I put that link correct in the um, chat, Kathy? Hang on, I'm going to look at the chat. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm going to stop sharing now, and then, then okay, that's good. a bit. Yeah, I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, no, that's saying share. How do I stop share? It's at the top. Oh, there it is. I've done this before, but for some reason now I'm talking, it was all over the place. It's okay. That's better. It's wonderful. I, can't, I couldn't see chat in the share. That's why I was saying, let me just check that link. I don't see the link. It's in the chat in the very bottom. The little chat box. Uh, chat box. Uh, well, I've got chat open. I can't see it, but there we go. That doesn't Happy mean to say it's not there. Com. I just wanted to make sure. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's the one. Good. So if you look, click on there and, and click on um, this, like a shopping with a drop down to portfolio, and then you'll find the 4950 paintings on the portfolio. Yeah. There's a I few love, places to get to it. I love the one of the signposts, but that's just because, you know, I love Buckingham. And so uh, uh, I, really I like love that signpost. signpost. Yeah. I had to do that signpost. It was, it was one and I managed to get some interesting things on it. And that was the other thing. I, I like to put words and details in. So if there were words that were appropriate, I try and include them. Wonderful. I was in Hawaii uh, a few months ago and there's a signpost similar, but I'm sure it says very different things <laughs> <laughs> in Maui. Oh, yes, yes. There's one, at the, was it the North Pole or the South Pole? There's one for, for the different countries. Uh, there's a massive one with with like, 50 arms or 100 arms on them, whatever it is and and you know france this way germany that way uh-huh usa that way and, and right wonderful like very specific and vague all at the same time right <laughs> absolutely absolutely well it could be vague <laughs> quite vague i might guess <laughs> wonderful well do we have any other questions from anyone here in the audience or comments something that you um, gathered out of this conversation, something you'd like to um, engage with Kathy with um, in our in our last bit of the conversation today. In the exhibition, um, I really enjoyed the fact that Kathy had done meditation kind of things or a bit of bit about her thought process to each picture. It really, to me, just added a whole other aspect to the paintings themselves. I think. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. It's, it's funny, it's one of those things I, I've only recently started doing, but I heartily recommend it to any artist is, is that you sit with your painting for 10 minutes because they do speak to you and you often remember things when you're looking at the painting that you maybe were thinking when you were creating it, but then because you've moved on from then, you've forgotten about it. And when you sit there and actually look at it, then you think, oh yes, I remember I was thinking that when that was doing that bit. and and. And that often sparks off again, more dialogue because paintings, I think you create the painting and then it takes on a life of its own because every person who comes and looks at it, sees it and finds something different in it and, and relates to it in different ways because they're bringing their own experiences. Wonderful, lovely. And that's, I, I like that connection. It's, it's sort of, it, it, it's, it's, it's lovely. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, let's see, we have a few minutes left. Anyone else here have any comments or questions for Kathy? Um, this is great, Kathy. Thanks for sharing. We've got a comment, a couple comments in the chat. chat. Um, am I pronouncing this right? Sat Satnam? Thank you. Satnam. Satnam, yeah. This is great, Kathy. Thanks for sharing. I'm currently in transit, so cannot talk. Okay, wonderful. Oh, well, thank you for, thank you for joining us, Satnam. <laughs> 
And then Betsy has, has yes, definitely, right? <laughs> Betsy's had a couple of comments, you know, thank you. I'm so inspired by your work. And she's now following you on Facebook. So there we thank go. you, Betsy. <laughs> Betsy's one of our regulars. You come every week, Betsy. Where, are, where is everybody from? I oh, hear. Um, I'm from Atlanta. And uh, All right. I'm yeah, I'm the urban planner who just, uh, I just love that you pay, are paying attention to things like this. <laughs> that I do, and uh, maybe I should talk more about those silly little things that I'm paying attention to, you know? Yeah, yeah do, do. Yeah. yeah. Where are you, Karina? I'm also in Atlanta. All right. Yep. And uh, I'd love to, you, you know, um, since you like this um, architecture, I actually, you know, in, in America, we have a lot of like very new buildings, but my studio mm. is situated in a, an old cotton mill um, uh, where, we, we, where they built cotton mills. Um, mm. And so mm. it's a lot of architecture from the 1800s, which yeah. America is kind of old. <laughs> Sheila and I are both um, Manchester girls. So we're, yeah, we're from very Manchester. familiar with cotton architecture. Yeah, yeah the, the, cotton, the cotton capital of the world, wasn't it, Manchester? It was at one point. Yeah, uh -huh. it's called it Cottonopolis. Cottonopolis, that's right. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, um, let's see, you might be familiar with some of the architecture from where my studio is from the, um, oh, what was that movie with Mockingjay? Um, what is that movie? Oh, I'm going to find it. <laughs> oh, um, Hunger Games, Hunger Games. Hunger Games, yes. Oh, yeah. All right. Hunger Games, most of it was all filmed here. So any oh, little brick walkway that you see or, you know, it, it, the, the funniest thing, I don't know, it was a little bit freaky actually. One day I showed up to my studio to come in, I think it was on Saturday, and there was the, the parking lot was filled with all these peasants, you know, painted, you know, in, in like dingy, you know, kind of rags, dressed in dingy type of rags. There were all these extras or like hundreds of them. <laughs> <laughs> and they were very mostly like, you know, because they were they were going to be in the film, right? You're like all the extras. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let, yeah. So, um, Kathy, I, I have a question for you. In the very beginning, you showed that beautiful, magnificent kind of large painting and then talked about getting into your challenge of making all of these and having that choice to, to work small for a while. What would you say would be the biggest contrast for you in like the process or even like once the painting is finished, you know, standing back and looking at that big painting versus your, you know, large collection of small pieces? Um, first of all, space, being able to stand far enough back from it. <laughs> um, they, they do take a long time and because they take a long time, the process can be extenuated because when you're working with masking fluid, you want to try and remove it as quickly as possible after the painting's dried. But when you're doing a large complicated piece, it takes you a while to build up all the layers and build, fill in all the details. And sometimes the masking fluid does not want to come off by the time you finish. So it's a lot slower to actually work through that. Mm. Um, differences between the two, it's, a lot more the small ones are much more portable so they were really good when i was going out doing demonstrations and i do tend to demonstrate when i'm doing like open studios and um art, art, art fairs and things like that i find it's a really good way to show people how i work um but i like working large because the, the large paintings you've got more space for the paint to to, to interact mm -hmm. so i'll have it i'll have like i love it when i get a large area with nothing going on because then the inks and the paints merge together and I get some fascinating effects that uh, you can't achieve with the lines there because they stop the paint from moving around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that one that you showed in the beginning was fabulous. I love the angles. And that's something I'm really struck by with pretty much all of your work, your your choice of the angles and the direction and even how you would crop an image you know, in terms of your subject matter, I find very intriguing and really, I would say, sets you aside from many other landscape painters that I've seen um, or architectural painters that I've seen. So wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Kathy, we have just a few moments left. Um, anything that you'd like to leave your audience uh, around the world with today? Um, well, I, th I think 
do do try a challenge like this because I mean I, I think I will do it again so if, if you are painting if you are creating something it's worth doing a challenge because you learn so much from it and there's this that old story isn't there where, where um, I think as an art teacher gives his students half his students have to complete a painting just one painting to get their grade and the other half have to do as many as possible and the, the ones who are only doing one painting spend hours trying to figure out what the perfect thing is, whereas the ones who have been graded on quantity just churn them out and they learn by the process. So doing a challenge, even if the beginning you don't do very well, by the end you'll have something amazing because you'll have gone through that process. Wonderful. And you, you learn and grow so much from that. So I think that's probably why I would share. Excellent. Thank you. I, I'm very familiar with that process of many, many, or just one <laughs> in building mm. really large pieces and then some smaller ones. Yeah, so you get stuck. With... What'd you say? I say you can get stuck if you're just doing more. This is true. This is true. Yeah. At an artist residency one time, I gave myself the challenge of one small drawing and what, you know, drawing painting each day and one small sculpture each day mm. and did that for two weeks. And then out of that, created an installation that was many, mm. many pieces. And I've made different iterations of that installation ever since then. So it was a really powerful process. So mm, thank is. you for reminding me of that as well. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. All right. Well, until next week, thank you all for joining us and Kathy and all of your um, uh, friends, Katie and Sheila and I believe Satnam, thank you for joining us from other parts of the world. And Betsy, thank you for coming back every single week. <laughs> and everyone that's on our Facebook uh, audience, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.